now we're in the cockpit of the Renault Megane TCR car. I thought this would be a great chance to show you guys what's involved with our TCR car and some of the technical side to what goes into this car. Uh, right now I'm sitting in the driver's seat in amongst all the controls and I'll begin to speak about some of the safety features as well. So this car is a six speed sequential gearbox. One of the only cars that require sequential shift in. A lot of the other TCR cars are paddle shift. I quite like um, this aspect of the car because it allows you to brake a little bit deeper and you can use the engine to help slow up the car, um, which I tend to like from a driver point of view. And it doesn't seem to slow us down whatsoever because it's flat shift in um, up the gears, but down the gears you have to brake and obviously um, rev match essentially to make sure there's no compression lock in. Um, and that's a real strength of this car. The main controls are situated right here on the steering wheel. So these controls um, are the ones I use most during the race, like talking to my team, uh, flashing the headlights, pit lane speed limit if we need it, if we're doing a pit stop, um, windscreen wipers and engine maps. Um, they're the main controls that we'll use throughout the race. And then there's a control panel down here to my right, which allows me to flick through different dash pages, uh, depending on what we need, whether it's a race start, um, qualifying, or for the mechanics to run up the car and get all the temperatures right before we get out on track. So that's all situated here. Uh, there's a brake bias um, adjuster as well to uh, distribute the brake in between the front and the rear of the car. And also a brake valve as well, which is quite an interesting one to change the setup of the car. You can uh, change how much of the brake pressure in the rear um, decreases as you release the pedal. Uh, it's quite complicated to explain, but um, it definitely um, affects the handling and the characteristics of the car during a session. And I tend to like it to help make the car rotate depending on the style of corner, whether it's a hairpin or a fast flowing corner. Also, we've got the handbrake here to my right, which is what we use for a race start. And that's when we use the launch control as well. So the car for a race start is essentially hold the handbrake, hold the launch control button, which holds at its maximum boost and foot flat to the floor and then essentially all you have to do is modulate the clutch which is a real simple uh, race start and the Renault has a real strength with the race starts and it's quite simple for us to get good launches which I always like to make up spots on the first lap. Okay so we've taken the wheels off our TCR car obviously it's front wheel drive so a lot happens up here in regards to suspension and driveline. So we've got our drive shafts that stick through the uh, front upright to spin the front wheels. Um, six piston uh, caliper up the front. We've got our new brakes installed ready for the first race once we get back racing. Uh, this TCR car utilizes the Olin's uh, suspension. Uh, definitely one of the best shocks going around. Um, this is what we use in our supercars and this is what we've recommended to use in our TCR car as well. Uh, we're quite happy with the performance of that. Last year we designed the front upright for these TCR cars. Is that annoying? Last year we co-developed... <laughs> Last year with this car we co-developed with Vukovic Motorsport in Switzerland uh, the front suspension and the front upright. Um, we're really happy with the design we come up with. It was a lot lighter than previously what was used on the car and it's given us a lot more adjustability in the front axle as well. Well, here we are at the rear of the car. The first thing you notice is how small the rear brake rotor and caliper is. This is because the car is front wheel driven and a lot happens up the front end of the car. Um, regardless of that, the braking performance overall is still quite effective and uh, yeah, one of the strengths of this car in particular. This model of car has a fixed rear beam. Uh, some of the cars have independent rear suspension, but this car's characteristics um, rely on this fixed rear beam. And we've got to tune around that. Um, my first understanding of this was the car was quite understeery. And with a front wheel drive car, you want the car to be a bit oversteery so you can get straight exits. And this season, we've made a lot of progress on that and uh, getting the car set up, tuned in perfectly. Well, here we are in the engine bay. And this is where all the performance happens with this TCR car. Uh, the Renault Megane runs about 350 horsepower. The turbo is quite big and it's situated at the back of the engine and it gets quite hot in the cabin as well because of this. Uh, there is enormous temperature um, being produced in this area and a lot of people think this is the road engine, which it is, but it's been reconditioned for purpose-built racing. 
Well, here we are at the front of the Renault Megane TCR car. Here we see the front splitter, which performs quite a substantial amount of aero during the races. This component is somewhat controlled amongst all the cars um, within similar spec and similar materials. This one in particular is made from carbon fibre and we make them in-house at Gary Rogers Motorsport. Now the Renault Megane is obviously a hatchback, so our rear wing is attached to the rear boot, uh, which performs once again a substantial amount of aero for this car. Without the rear wing it would be so unstable. And this little wing here is uh, a control component amongst all the cars. You'll soon notice that this actual rear wing shape is the same amongst all the cars, which is good in terms of parity. However, these brackets that come off the back of the boot are different amongst all the cars, and that can change quite a lot of the aero as well. So with the Renault, the rear wing is situated quite far back. And one of the rules is the wing can't be any higher than your roof line. So they're within the rules that we have to play.